Hi, I'm Toby Hodges, and we are sailing aboard the Linjet 39. Beautiful Swedish design, inside and out. family-owned business. The yard itself, uh, 1886 it formed and it's run by by Daniel here and his brother Christoph and their other brother Marcus and their grandfather started their yard, um, started working at the yard in the, in the 1940s and then the Linjet brand started 50 years ago next year, so 1973 and they build these very very nice uh, cruiser cruisers um, performance cruisers I would say They're fast cruising yachts um, typically used uh, around Stockholm Sweden area where they're built and they've launched 900 boats in that time we're sailing here aboard La Rochelle sailing upwind in around 12 to 14 knots and we've been making uh, we've been making six and a half to seven knots. Points well, uh, really nice on the rudder. It's a single single rudder, really nice on the helm. And uh, yeah, it's a real tree. This is a beautifully built, good-looking Swedish sailing yacht. So yeah, it has a very nice set of UK sail making sails on there from Stockholm. This one has the 107% Genoa on it uh, and you can see you've got a self-attacking jib rail there if you want it as well but as it is the sheets and running rigging all, all led aft to two winches here and clutches there so you don't need to come forward at all it's set up to be short-handed uh, there is the option for 158% Genoa as well uh, but yeah this uh, Good pointing with these and yeah easy easy to manage for this banker clutches on on both sides so you've got these the big Anderson primary here and the secondary outside of it and yeah probably quite close together if you're racing but you have a powered winch on this one typically owners will go for a powered one so easy to operate from the helm because you can straddle the helm when you're sat there as well So now sailing under Jenica here in yeah around 12 to 13 knots breeze and making eight knots boat speed as you can see quite close close reaching really for this sail. Lovely conditions now. really immediately evident to tell this has been set up well by sailors Daniel and Christoph both done a lot of racing as well but look how comfortable and well set up this cockpit is how deep it is there big protective combing going through some choppy seas now see the water running down the decks but lovely and dry in the cockpit run straight down here and then straight off after on that well there but it's not cluttered with rope tail ends because it's been thought about nice deep tail lockers there for all of those so a lot of the time when you bring all of the running rigging after on a yacht this size you'll end up with a bit of a snake pit in there there's big allocation for tail lockers in there also like the clear run that you get through the cockpit here there is the option to enclose that aft bench but no one's apparently taken it so far you just push that button there and that pops open the life raft locker as demonstrated there we go 
How neat's that? Straight off the transom behind. And then you've got stowage below both the aft helm seats and then typical for Scandinavian areas, you know, to have the aft kedge anchor there. And a little swimming platform with swim ladder. Quarter lockers and a sail locker forward in the bows, and that leaves a clear walkthrough in the cockpit itself with a removable table here. And say so these deep protective combings around the cockpit, and then you move down the companionway into this really very <laughs> inviting, cozy, warm Scandinavian style interior. So this is offered as uh, in standard as mahogany, a more traditional Swedish style mahogany finish, or in this European light oak, with a light bit being there, but a white tint in the, in the oak itself. But uh, yeah, it's a more of a traditional hull shape than the modern ones, so not the massive amount of beam, but they, my impression is they've used the space really, really well. Um, stowage wherever you wherever there can be and uh, yeah a good easy boat quiet quiet boat and nice and easy to walk around in offered with the three cabins as we see here um, with a, a shower compartment and forward heads uh, or if you want a two cabin version what you end up with is a larger shower compartment aft and uh, this would become a stowage, you know, big aft uh, stowage locker. But in this format, the other thing you can change as well is having a traditional chart table. So that would move forward, uh, see our forward facing chart table, um, and lose obviously the first section of this starboard sofa berth. The water tanks are below this starboard sofa berth and below the forward berth and that gives you 315 litres of water 200 litres of fuel aft as well and, and a 100 litre holding tank so well set up for, for cruising a few ni really nice features on this um, as you get here obviously this is a shared heads area but you get a big hanging wardrobe area to here to starboard, stow all your gear, especially for this forward cabin, that's the main locker for that. And uh, yeah, there's your heads there, shared by the three cabins, but good size heads because you have that shower area aft. And then a big open access into this forward cabin, uh, but that's uh, got this neat door here that folds away to give that the privacy to close off up onto this side. And then yeah, plenty of light, still got six foot headroom in the entrance here. Just lose it, just starting to lose it in this infill area. That, yeah, good amount of light. It's all glass as well, all clear glass used for the whole ports. of finish is superb. Swedes have a very good reputation for it, this yard upholds that and uh, they also build the, the Shogun racer cruisers as well if you've seen those, the Shogun 50. Uh, anyway this is a, a, obviously a lot more of a, a traditional boat. Good, this has got your chart area here and your instrument panel with really good access to all the wiring behind there. Nice 
nice little touches as well like this if I lift up one of these panels you can see not only see into the bilge here nice deep sump in the bilge um, but yeah they've used a, a velcro wrong way around um, to yeah make give it a nice soft um, so there's no helps no noises around there and gives it a nice soft finish around any of those uh, floorboards lifting floorboards really nicely done bin below the double sinks drawer below there as well all, so, all drawers soft closing bank of four drawers below that chart table and then look at this proper wet hanging locker because it's a shower compartment plenty of light full headroom and yeah a good rail and a seat there for showering I'll show you the port side aft cabin because it's without that mattress and um, and the bags in it but otherwise the same as in here so l-shaped galley oh you know moderate for this size really plenty of space These are being changed for a sliding, sliding style. Look at that, really neat. Uh, sliding style drawer sto door stowage, stowage there. Again, lots of natural light in the aft cabin. Stowage where you want it, need it. Really, even the light switch is lovely and neat. access into the engine room from both sides here but the main access obviously under the companionway steps a nice place to sit and recline here the forward end of this double berth yeah conventional engine access there for the 50 horsepower Volvo Penta. Some boats you wanna just keep sailing. And this Linjet 39 is one of them. Looks like we're gonna get right into the marina here sailing. Here we go. Just furling the Genoa now. Beautiful, beautiful evening sail. Another really neat feature that they've got on the life raft locker as well is the push button opening for these lockers. Very neat. Little gas strut on it keeps it open for you. So yeah, there's room there for that 143 meter squared Jenica we were sailing with. Still got room for you warps and fenders further forward. This may be a premium priced boat but it sails like it and it, yeah, it really is designed, built and finished accordingly. Very very impressive. So this boat has the, the Vetus docking system um, so no conventional throttle for the engine so now we're in motoring mode or uh, docking mode docking mode yeah, exactly. which means both the stern and bow thruster are employed so we are instant the gas and uh, throttle throttle on this one for the engine so when i move it in the front i it's going faster yeah and then it can be used basically at the moment that we're in docking where it can be used by pushing this button on the top uh, you can engage bow thruster or stern thruster or use it as a conventional throttle lever. So Christos going to show us how you turn it into a dock here.
and then twisting twisting the handle you can turn it both bow thruster and stern thruster on Not that a 39 footer needs that at all, but yeah, for those that want to take the worry out their docking, this could be a system that helps. This might just be one of the nicest boats you've never heard of. The Linjet 39 starts at 400,000 euros, base price expat, which means a sail away price of 460, and this boat we're on here with the options including the sails, flexi teak decks, um, is 560,000 euros ex fat, and that's those prices are for 2024 because that's what they're sold out to already. I hope you've enjoyed the sail and tour as much as I have. See you next time. Bye.